Good evening, everyone. Today is October the 6th, 2020. Our thought for today is a fallen leaf is nothing more than a summer, a summer's wave. Goodbye, uh, author unknown. I want to go ahead and officially call this meeting to order tonight. Are we going to ask that, um, how about Commissioner Cowan, if you would give us our invocation tonight and um, Commissioner Schultz, if you would give us our pledge tonight, please. Let's pray. <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, dear God, for your blessings, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our county, Lord, and the people that live here and make up every aspect of the community here. Lord, we just ask that you give us wisdom and grace, Lord, as we make a decision tonight, Lord. Lord, help us to, to, uh, to be wise in our decisions, Lord. Pray, God, that you'll uh, continue to bless our county, bless those that are uh, still affected by this COVID, Lord. We pray that you'll just uh, heal those people and bring them back to being able to, to resume their lives, Lord, as normal. Lord, we just pray for uh, all the things that you've given us, and we just thank you for them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is um, adopt the agenda. I seek a motion, please, for the de uh, agenda adoption. It's been motioned by Commissioner um, Mason and second by Commissioner Schultz. All in favor? It passes 5 0. Next is citizens' comments. This opportunity that we allow citizens to make comments about agenda topics only. Um, you may come at this time. You have three minutes to do so. Please state your name and your address for the record, please. Citizen comments, agenda topics only. You may come at this time. Please come up and state your name and your address for the record, please. Agenda topics only. You have three minutes to do so. John Dobbs. I live at 211 Dry Pond Road. Is, is, uh, on the agenda is, is the article about the, that was in the paper about uh, Mr. Barnes, uh, Mr. Barnes and Ms. Bell want to sue the county? You can come up. a pay raise? You can come up at the end of the meeting and, and make your comments. It's oh, okay. about agenda topics only. Okay. Okay. Agenda topics only. Agenda topics only. Agenda topics only. Thank you. Um, next is on the next is the chairman's report. Um, tonight we have uh, Miss Ashley with us. Ashley Best with uh, Newton County um, 4-H Extension Office, and she has some um, some kiddos and some some team players with her tonight. So if you would please come up. Um, and tell us a little bit about what you do over at the 4-H office. And we do have a, um, a proclamation for you guys also tonight. So my name is Ashley Best, and I'm the Newton County Extension agent, as well as the County Extension coordinator. And I would like to introduce you all to our new 4-H um, educator. This is Charlene Scott, and she has plenty of experience with 4-H, and we are so blessed to have her in our office so I'm gonna let her talk a little bit about 4-H because that's really what tonight's about because it's National 4-H Week and that's what the proclamation is. Good evening. As she said, my name is Charlene Scott and today is officially my first day. <laughs> We're hitting the ground running. Welcome um, aboard. <laughs> um, but it is National 4-H Week. So with that, we Think about all the things that we do in 4-H, one of the biggest things being public speaking. So here we are, public speaking, which is quite hard to do right now in COVID land, but all is going well. <laughs> so in honor of National 4-H Week, if people are following us on our social media, we are doing a spirit week. Um, 
We're also kicking off with recruitment week to recruit new members, get people returning, re-registered to kick off the year for our 4-H nights that are gonna be coming up throughout the year. And we will do fourth grade through 12th grade. Thank There's you. There's a really awesome video online if you want to go check it out on thank, the Newton County YouTube. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Um, we know that you, y'all do so many different things um, here in our community with 4-H and um, I know COVID has kind of put a hamper on things that you're able to do. I know uh, some of the trips that you guys normally do have been kind of pro postponed. So, um, but y'all are still trying to um, help the kids out and encourage the kids and, and teach them. Um, so we, we really do uh, thank you guys for what you do in, in this community. Yeah. Thank you. Commissioners, y'all have any questions? Uh, anything y'all want to say to them before we get, issue this proclamation? Thank you. Guys, we're going to do a group picture photo with everybody. Y'all don't mind, do you, commissioners? Thank you. It says Georgia National 4-H Week Proclamation. 4-H. I'm going to step back from you guys. Um, whereas the young people of, of Georgia and Newton County are our greatest natural resource, and where whereas the 4-H program has assisted in the growth and development of Georgia and Newton County youth for 116 years. And, where, and whereas adult volunteers, leaders, and advisors are devoting their talents, leadership, and re resources to serving these leaders of tomorrow. And whereas 4-H helped its members discover and acquire the essential elements of, a po of, of, of positive youth development of mastery, and mastery generosity, uh, belonging, and independence in the areas of leadership, civic engagement, healthy living, and science. And whereas Newton County is Georgia 4-H and entices young people and adults to become involved in educational and entertaining programs offered by the 4-H program in Newton County through the University of Georgia College of Agriculture and Environmental Science um, co Cooperative Extension. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Chairman Marcelo Banks of the Newton County Board of Commissioners, do declare and proclaim the week of October the 4th, October the 4th through the 10th, 2020, to become Newton County 4-H week and urge all our citizens to assist in according and observance and attention and importance to which this is rightly entitled. In the witness whereof I have set unto my hand and affixed my hour seal on the sixth day of October 20th. 20, October the 6th. Um, it is 4-H week. Guys, and we so much are proud of y'all. Thank y'all for what y'all do. Thank y'all for the leadership that y'all uh, showed these kids and, and developed throughout our, our community. Uh, we're going to ask that the board would come up and, and take a picture with you guys as we proclaim this week for H week here in Newton County.
Thank you guys for being here tonight. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that's okay, we'll just, we'll pick up at number six. Um, also, um, early voting starts um, on the 12th next week. So guys, please, please be advised. Uh, that's all we have for the children's report next week. Well, the county manager, Mr. Curry, is feeling ill tonight, and he cannot be with us tonight. So we're going to skip the county manager's report, and we're going to go down to old business. Um, county attorney uh, Megan Martin, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Board members, before you tonight, you have a revised policy regarding um, enterprise procurement policy for minority business owners. Um, I have reviewed and it has been revised to include women as a part of our definition of minority. The only item that I'm suggesting to change, I would ask that you approve with this change is where the word sex is used to define, we're gonna put gender instead so that we would be inclusive of all. So um, if a motion to approve was made, it would be motion to approve minority business enterprise procurement policy subject to the revision of the word sex to gender. Thank you, ma'am. Um, guys, I seek a motion, please. Um, Commissioner Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I make a motion um, uh, as stated by the county attorney with the substitutions. Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner Schultz and second by Commissioner Mason. Any discussion? Guys, I, I just want to add, I um, also talked to Mr. Kerr um, about adding um, disadvantaged, uh, I mean, dis, yet yeah, uh, disabled uh, veterans also. And he's going to um, look at the, the legal part of that and also see can we add disabled veterans to that as well. Um, any more discussion? Um, Commissioner Cowan. Just a comment. Uh, a lot of folks think sometimes things are either Democrat or Republican issues, but uh, we noticed this past week President Trump authorized a $500 billion uh, proposal uh, for minority businesses. And uh, it's, just, it's just interesting that it's timely at the same time going on with us. Oh. In Commissioner Mace, uh, Henderson, I'm sorry. Commissioner uh, Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, then I guess the question is, Commissioner Cowan, when do we see the money? Like anything else with the federal government. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wait. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, all in favor? It passes five to zero. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Next is the consent, the consent agenda. I seek a motion for approval, please. Mr. Chair, I move for approval of the consent agenda. Can I get it? Thank you, sir. It's been motioned by Commissioner Schultz and second by Commissioner Mason. Any discussion? All in favor? It passes five to zero, thank you. Next is item number nine. Senior service purchasing request, request and approval of agreement. Um, Attorney Martin, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a contract before you all regarding installing vending machines at senior services. Um, payment for the machine will come out of those collections, which is 5% of a monthly commission. The contract was reviewed by legal and all of our revisions were accepted. Thank you. I seek a motion, please. Uh, Commissioner Schultz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think this, my understanding is that these are all healthy um, snacks, and I think that's a great opportunity for our seniors to have um, vending machines that have healthy snacks in them. So I would move for approval of the agreement with delectable vending. Thank you, sir. Um, this is a motion by Commissioner Schultz and second by Commissioner um, Edwards. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Pass five to zero, thank you. 
item number 10, uh, board consideration of, of an amendment to the town square agreement with Covington. Attorney Martin, please. Thank you, Chairman Baines. Um, you all, I received two emails from Sam Van Volkenberg regarding um, alcohol open container on the city square. Um, we have put forward revisions to that agreement um, to give you a flavor of what we have. The city's ordinances indicate that only beverages that will be allowed for consumption are those sold by licensed restaurants within the historic districts. All of the beverages must be in a clear plastic cup with the city's logo. Each customer must wear a wristband while consuming. Additionally, um, today, Sam followed up um, with some more information, um, giving you potential holidays and other times that, um, for example, St. Patrick's Day or Fourth of July, those are the type of holidays that um, or events that would be occurring on the square. Of course, we do know that they do the musical concerts during the day and those things will continue as well. Um, but if I can answer any questions for you, I'd be happy to do so. Thank you, um, Ms. Martin. Um, I'm going to let you, commissioners who have questions, ask questions before we get a motion on the floor. Um, Commissioner Calvin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, let's see if I understand this. Um, this would, is consumption of alcohol on the green space allowed on the current intergovernment agreement? No, not open, no, not open containers. That's why they're seeking the revision. Okay, so they can continue, you know, they can do anything they want to on the sidewalks, but they cannot use the green space on the square as part of a uh, open container area. Is that right? That's the way it is now. Are they looking to change that this town square agreement so that for special events that they could have an open container? Okay. So we don't want if if we feel like we don't want to change that, we just need to say no to the amendment. Hold it down. Right? Yes, that okay. would be correct. Yep. Anyone else? Uh, Commissioner Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> so do do does the city of Covington allow these this this type of uh, activity at Legion Field now? Do we know? Okay. All right. So, well, let, let me add another comment. Uh, not a question, but a comment. So, I've been up here on Friday nights. Not every Friday night, but once a month, and I'm on this square just about every single day. And it's absolute chaos uh, around this square, um, especially given the new configuration. Um, I've almost hit people in crosswalks. Uh, it, I just can't, I can't understand why we want to add another element. Another, there, there's alcohol in the out here now. I mean, you know, which I don't have an objection to, but just adding another element doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't make any sense whatsoever to me. Um, uh, you know, I, I just don't, I, I just don't understand. And, and, and let me add this, my constituency has been absolutely clear. District one constituency, constituency does not want this at all. Now I have not, uh, that is from unsolicited. Those are uns, unsolicited. That's unsolicited input from my constituency. So, um, but they're adamantly opposed to it. And that's just, that's, that's going to be where I stand. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I know when we previously discussed this, I believe in 2019, we kind of talked about it and had a, a very brief discussion about it. And I recall when it came before us previously, it was only to request specific events. For example, the 4th of July event or any type of major events that we would have uh, on the square where the roads would actually be blocked off and there's not any traffic or cars coming through. So is this going to, because uh, I didn't see it here where it specified specific events um, like we had previously discussed before, where the roads will be blocked off. So for me, I, I think almost 
kind of adding to what Commissioner Edwards said, if the traffic is coming through, that can be additional chaos. But if we know that it's an event where it is blocked off and there's not cars coming through the square at that particular event, that may be something that we can look into further. So I would like to see an event where it's a specific event stated uh, in this intergovernmental agreement and it's only an event where there are no cars or traffic coming through the square. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd really like to hear from the sheriff because there's going to have to be some type of policing and I know that the city of Covington will police on the city of Covington's property, but who's going to be responsible for policing on the, on the county property? So I've noticed that the sheriff is here. Could we um, hear from the sheriff or could we um, get a statement from the sheriff at some point in time? Mm -hmm. um, sheriff, do you, you want to make a statement tonight or? You want to make a statement tonight on this issue? Not at the time. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner um, Cowan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's always, to me, and even at, when I work at the city, it's confusing exactly what defines the area of the square because the square in the middle is round, but the square is also defined by the sidewalks that make up the, the four the streets that come in. So I think... It's, it would make it more sense to me if, if we would identify it as the green space in the center of the square as opposed to just calling it the square. Because when you say the square, it means anything. But uh, is that, does that make sense, Megan, to me? Uh, sure. Um, I understand what you're saying. I did want to um, bring one thing to your attention that um, you all haven't asked about yet, but may shed some light on what you're saying. Um, the open container event times will be limited to 10 a.m. to 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sundays and holidays would be excluded from open container open container days. It doesn't say anything about sidewalks or how that would happen. Um, it just refers to it as square park only. Right. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Henderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, you know, I, I guess the question is that uh, if uh, if we approve, uh, I guess, this resolution, I guess I call it that, if we approve it, that means that they can come out and drink, you know, alcohol all in the square, and, and yet you go a block over to Brown Street, or you go, uh, yeah, you go to jail. <laughs> so, it, it, do we have to have alcohol everywhere? Can you can you be go and sit down somewhere in peace without people you know drinking all over you and and stuff? You know, I I thought with the restaurants around the square that you had enough place that you go and sit up high and drink and yell and holler whatever you want to do, but we have to have it all over in the square too. You know, I just you know I, I just think we got enough places now already that you can um that you can drink alcohol without really just missing the square. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So we're going to um, seek a motion. You can vote it up or vote it down. Um, I seek a motion, please. Commissioner I make, a, I make a motion to deny the amendment. Okay. Uh, it's been motioned by Commissioner Cowan. Um, and second by Commissioner Henderson. Any more discussion? All in favor? Thank you. That motion that is denied. Thank you so much. Um, next is item number 11, Public Works. Uh, request approval of a sub-grant agreement with the Lano Region Commission. Are you going to just come up? Chester, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We have 
been uh, working on getting a grant from uh, FHWA for over a year now and finally have an agreement from ARC to um, to receive the funds to um, to pay for transit study so that this contract is with ARC um, and we are the it's a sub grant agreement so uh, we're getting the money from FHWA through ARC who is then our partner in this uh, project so um, the total um, Estimated cost is about three hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars, and and uh, FHWA will be paying eighty percent, and then the county have to pay twenty percent. So I'm requesting tonight that the board approve uh, for the chairman to uh, to sign this agreement with uh, with ARC, Atlanta Regional Commission. Thank you, Chester. Uh, I seek a motion, please. Uh, Commissioner Schultz. We've been waiting for this for a very long time, so I make a motion to approve the subgrant agreement with the Atlanta Regional Commission for the transit study. Thank you, sir. It's been motioned by um, Commissioner Schultz and second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion? All in, I'm sorry, Commissioner Edwards. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> so this was, uh, this was part of the, the uh, 2021 budget. This is this is money that was put into that budget in the 2021 budget. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Anyone else? All in favor? It passes five to zero. Thank you so much. Next, we're going to have um, our zoning. Just a couple of minutes early, so. Judy, if you make your way up here, greatly appreciate it. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, tonight's request is actually uh, to reaffirm a resolution that was passed. As many of you will recall, in the middle of August, this board took a lot of steps to try to um, help facilitate things for school to be able to start on time. And one of the items that we did was we passed an emergency resolution that would halt the enforcement of a particular zoning code so that places of worship would be able to uh, conduct uh, schools where maybe children could go and have access to internet and so forth. So we passed that resolution on August the 18th of this year and doing best practices, our uh, legal counsel had uh, advised us, our zoning uh, person had advised us to do a 30 day ad in the paper as what is normally required by zoning procedures law. So we placed that ad in the paper and we advertised, so if anyone had any interest or needed to make any comments in regards to this resolution, that they could come at tonight's meeting and make a comment so the board could consider it. So what staff is asking is for the public hearing to be conducted, if there's anyone here that have any feelings for or against, and then at the end of this, we would ask for you to reaffirm the resolution R081820A, a resolution of the Newton County Board of Commissioners temporarily suspending enforcement of section 510480 subsection C4 of the county zoning ordinance pertaining to conditional use permits required for school and child care services at places of worship in residential districts. And just to remind you also, this resolution is effective through the end of this year, December 31st. Um, it is our understanding that schools are, be going, are going back in person. Um, and assuming that moves forward, then staff does not anticipating asking you to um, extend this, but we do need to make sure that we have followed all of the zoning laws and did it through advertisement in case someone had any comments. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Any any comment? Hold on one second. Any any questions, Commissioner? Uh, Commissioner Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So let me say, um, I, 
in in District One, I know of several of these locations that have uh, in, helped our parents immensely. Uh, I know our school system is going through a phased in in person approach now, uh, but from what I understand, it's only for those students that opted in for in person learning in the beginning. Now I know the the kids that opted for distance learning will be wanting to return as well as things as they you know see things safer but um i know i, th I think keeping this in place I, I i truly support keeping this in place through the end of the year at least the school um, year th through the through the end of this year yeah okay. through through the end of this what this this was the calendar year right yes sir this yeah. will be december yeah so at least through the calendar year and then and then before uh this expires, I'm in favor of revisiting this again to see if it's, if it's even still needed. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anyone, uh, Commissioner Henderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> and uh, you know, that was, that was a terrific idea on the, uh, thank you, Ms. Judy. Uh, I just wanna say, I know at Nelson Heights, personally, there's about seven kids that still come every, every morning from eight until three. Sometimes it's the parent get a little late, 3.30. And uh, and they bring their Chromebooks and they practice social distances, and um, you know it's temperature check when you come in. But this this something that was very needed by by the kids, and and you know it's um something when you're trying to assist the kids in their learning. And some of the parents, at least a few of them that I, that I've seen and spoke with, uh, they're still a little skeptical about sending their child amongst a whole lot of kids and so they feel a little small uh, room or class with their teacher with their Chromebook is, is really good so um uh you know so um, but it seemed like it growing because <laughs> it was we we were having them more than about 10 and we had a, a wait list of about five more once it was wanting to come in so you know I don't know where it's going to be a, a few months down the line but I think we as uh, as citizens and parents and and people who care, we need to continue to do everything we can to help our kids. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Judy. I'll seek a motion, please. So move. So move is stated. It's been it's been motioned by Commissioner Henderson. Public hearing. We need to we need to open it up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Um, it is approximately 7:33. Uh, we want to open it up for our public hearing tonight. Um, those that want to speak in favor tonight, you may come at this time. You have 10 minutes to do so. Those that want to speak in favor tonight. Those that want to speak in favor tonight, you have 10 minutes to do so. That portion of our public hearing is closed. We also allow uh, 10 minutes to, for those that want to speak opposing this tonight. You may come at this time. Please state your name, your address for the record, please. Those that want to oppose tonight. Would anyone like to oppose tonight? Thank you. That portion of our public hearing is closed as well. I seek a motion, please. Uh, so moved it, so moved and stated by Ms. Judy. Thank you. Thank you. It's been motioned by Commissioner Henderson and second by Commissioner Edwards. Any more discussion? All in favor? It passes four to five to zero. Thank you. Alcohol license. Um, first reading. The Kroger. The Kroger Company. Five three four zero Highway Twenty South Covington. GA 316, Ruby Clemens, District 2, first reading. Uh, first reading as well, Liberty Food Mart, 11408 Brown Bridge Road, Covington, GA 316, Shania, Shanal Sarani, Sar uh, District 4, first reading. Citizens' comments, this opportunity that we allow citizens to come up and make comments. Um, about any topic, you may come at this time. Please state your name, your address for the record, please. Please 
You have three minutes to do so. Please state your name and your address for the record, please. <clears throat> uh, good evening, Chairman. Good evening, Commissioner. Uh, good evening. Commissioner. My name is Terry Gray. Can you please speak My the address is 15 Maple Court. You said better, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Covington. I am here today to ask for your help and possible consideration for a problem that I'm experiencing in my neighborhood. I live in the Worthington Woods subdivision off of Highway 81, and we have a health and safety condition that's not being addressed. And by that, I mean, we are next to, excuse me, I'm sorry. We're next to a cemetery and the grass has not been cut in our area since June. And so it is now four feet high and growing. Now, that's a safety, that's a health issue. Uh, as far as safety, when we leave our subdivision, the grass is so high that we're not able to get a good view of 81 going south from the stoplight. We have to edge out into the highway before we can make a turn going further south. Um, for the record, I have spoken to Mr. Etheridge, who is the new city manager in the city of Porterdale. And what he has said to me uh, for several times is that the county uh, is cutting the grass. Um, that does not answer my question because that's, that's not addressing the issues that I'm concerned with. So I'm here tonight to ask you uh, if there's anything that can be done to address those issues for our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. So, someone will get with you after the board meeting. Um, anyone else? Please state your name, your address for the record, please. You have three minutes to do so. John Dobbs, live at 211 Drop Pine Road. <clears throat> I just get, I was reading in a paper Sunday about you earning $101,000 a year, Miss Bell earning $103,000 a year, but y'all salary is on the low side. <clears throat> and y'all want to sue the county and back pay is $180,000. Where are we going to get, where's Newton County going to get $360,000 to give you and Miss Bell your raise in this time of need? You know, everybody's out of work. Newton County's houses ain't selling over there on my side. And then you want to take the statue down out of Times Square over there. Who's going to pay for that? Is that going to be put on the homeowners too? To raise our taxes, I noticed one hundred eighty thousand dollars is going to be put on our home uh, housing prices. Our taxes are going to go up because we got to give you a raise and Miss Bell a raise because y'all are underpaid. I wish I made a hundred thousand dollars a year on my retirement. I don't know where I'm going to get my next paycheck. I'm I'm just on a monthly paycheck retirement. How am I going to keep paying these high prices when everybody on this board wants a raise? I just don't understand it. It just don't make no sense to me. You've been in office now, I know, for four years. You're getting uh, reelected because nobody's running against you. <clears throat> so you're going to do whatever you want to do because you're not going to be able to run again. That's just my, my opinion. <clears throat> Miss Bell, over on probate court side, if somebody's running against her, I'm gonna vote against her. If somebody was running against you, I'd vote against you. 
you lost my confidence. This whole board has lost my confidence because every time I come in here, y'all want more money, more money, and more money. Where are we getting it at? The houses over there on 162 is not selling. You got two subdivisions that got houses in them, and they're still empty. They got a subdivision one, going to be built one day. Ain't got a home in it yet. So where are we going to get the money at? I would really like to know. If y'all have that much money, why don't y'all give it to the homeowners here in Newton County, offset their taxes? That's my comment. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Please state your name, your address for the record, please. Thomas Buckner, 650 Fleet Drive. Hey, I might get thrown out for saying this now, but why is Kerr up here and him sick? And if he's got that virus, he's going, we're all been, well, you know what I mean. Now, when I come in down there, I had to stand in front of that thing and they checked my temperature and uh, all that. And if y'all had to come through the same door and come through that thing, they would check you, but y'all don't have to do this. And I don't know, any of you could be sick. How do I know? So, and what is the matter with, what was the matter with Kerr anyway? Nobody knows. He was sick. He looked like he had a cold. And that's, uh, that's that virus uh, is about like a cold. So we want to all come down with it. Man. And this thing should have been, he shouldn't have came up here, period. And he should have come through that door down there and got checked like we had to do. I noticed that for a long time ago that y'all come out of this back door. Okay, we come in the front door and they check everything in their pockets. We can't bring a gun or a knife in here. But every one of y'all could bring have a, a Thompson submachine gun for all I know. Huh? Come on, guys. Come on. Check it. Are you come through the front door? Okay. I'm not talking about you. If you come through the front door. I'm talking about the one that didn't get a check. Thank you. Anyone else? Citizens' comments? You may come at this time. You have three minutes to do so. Anyone else? Um, Commissioner Edwards, Commissioner Mason, Commissioner Schultz. Um, I, I was under the impression we were going to make a decision tonight about a work session and um, we determine are. that. So I just want to remind us to make sure that we get that, we are. that date and time. Commissioner Henderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, comment? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I want to ask, first I want to make sure Mr. Butler knows when I came to the front door and it, they make sure I had the right temperature. And secondly, I just want to, you know, I've been on the commission longer than most anybody and I have never voted for a raise for myself in the time that it came up. I didn't vote for it then. And I'll tell you the reason why, because I consider it to be an honor and a privilege to be a board member on this board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Cowell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to address the uh, um, gentleman's question about salaries and everything, that's just a matter that there's an interpretation of state law. Those salaries are set in state law. Uh, there's been a, a disagreement as to how that's interpreted. And we're working on that at this point. Um, so we're getting through that. So uh, just give us some time and we'll see how that shakes out. Um, thank you. Also, um, the county the county has stepped in and to help Porter allow 
um, ma'am, to to um, help them cut their grass. Um, I don't know exactly what what uh, Mr. Frank um, told you, but the county um, we are on a rotating schedule that we cut um, the county the unincorporated grass. So what we did, we also incorporated Porterdale to help them out in in these uh, tough times for them. Uh, but I do know there's a um, a cleanup plan, uh, and you may be aware of that. You may be part of that with um, State Rep. Pam Dickerson and 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 that crew um, to clean up that cemetery, and so that grass will be getting cut. Um, so that's not part of the unincorporated county. It is in the city limits of Porterdale, uh, but we are trying to do what we can to help Porterdale out to answer your question. Um, Commissioner Cowan has. Um, answer that other question so uh, but we do need to set a date for a work session um, really really quick um, I think we need to do it as quick as possible to talk about the um, new language that need to go into a bill um, for our state legislators to um, to pass through if we get a special um, call session and if not we need this language to be ready to go at the beginning of the year so we need a date um and we need to do this as quick as possible um as quick as possible uh, um i know i saw two um response responses today i'm not exactly sure what they were i think thursday you leaving out of town y'all leaving out of town Next Tuesday. Um, can everybody make next Tuesday? The 13th. The 13th. The 13th. I know Commissioner Cowan is headed out of town as well. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, we're going to be out <coughs> the week of the 19th. Okay, so we have to be before the 19th. God, this is very important. Um, so we, we need to, if we can, uh, make that date. And Commissioner uh, Mason, I will be handling that meeting for me. I greatly appreciate it. Um, Commissioner Henderson, can you be here? It's okay. Thank you, sir. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. The 13th. The 13th. Mm -hmm. And I'll be reaching out to the constitutional officers, um, those that want to be here and try to make sure they are here, and our local delegation, those that want to be here, make sure they're here as well. I don't think we have a need for executive session tonight. Uh, so I seek a motion that we okay. all in favor. All right. All right. We are. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming tonight and caring enough about your community to be here.